In today's video, we're going to try something totally different, and I'm going to try a little experiment with a fluorescent tube. See if we can uh, light it up with alternative power supplies. This should be interesting. You know, I have this ridiculous light fixture that uses these PL13 bulbs. These are the ones that were used to be in my hall that I replaced with the fancy LEDs with the fancy filaments. Had I recycled the fixtures, put them up in my bathroom. This bulb here is very old. Uh, this was installed in 2002 and here we are 2018 and finally burned out. But the problem with this particular design of fixture is when you remove the lamp because this is held in place with a clip, when you remove it hit the end of it and it breaks it every time you can't take these bulbs out of the stupid fixture without breaking them because there's no clearance you've got the, the metal housing is like right here you got just enough clearance to put the bulb in so if this is the socket the end of the housing is like that well of course when the tube is plugged in you got about that much space trying to pull this thing out when it's over your head you hit the metal rim and you break the bulb every time but uh, that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is I'm going to take the, the starter. There's the starter in the end of this thing. And I'm going to see if I can fire up a regular fluorescent bulb using the starter that's in here and using a uh, some type of an inductive uh, load. And I know the filaments are still okay in here. So um, Basically, what I should be able to do is I should be able to connect a regular, like a 15-watt bulb through something that will kick it, such as the primary side of an AC adapter, and feed it through here, because I think the filaments are still okay. So it should provide a, a loop that will cause the starter bottle to close and should give me enough of a kick to light a regular bulb. Let's try that just for an experiment for just something fun to do. Now here is something else that's very ancient. You can see that this thing's kind of black because this is an old Westinghouse American made cool white F15 T12. Okay, I don't even think you can get T12 lamps anymore in 15 watt. I think they're all like T8s. Uh, but anyway, this, this is very old, this lamp here. This is probably I don't know, 30, 40 years old. It's ridiculous how old this thing is. This was in an old fixture that was uh, that was running for many, many, many years. But it still works. This is how I'm going to wire this, just so you guys get an idea. I'm going to take my 120 volt line and I'm going to run it through the primary of my little wall ward adapter with nothing connected to the secondary. The output of that is going to go into one end of the fluorescent because as you know in the end here there's a filament that may help with my pen would write in the end here there's a filament and then again on the other end here there's a, a filament and my pen is still not writing because I grabbed one that's probably got no ink we'll try this one okay this pen doesn't want to write either what's going on with all these pens there's a filament in the end here and there's a filament in the end here and inside these tubes, there's a little filament in, inside each of these tubes here, right? So, we're going to have a circuit that goes through the primary winding. The reason why we want to do this is we need to limit the amount of current. Otherwise, if we put full current across the tube, it's going to overload, blow the circuit, because a fluorescent tube, once it fires, becomes almost like a dead short. It's going to go to a very, very low impedance. It will draw full current, and it will trip the breaker, and it will burn the lamp out, too, more likely. So, we need to limit the amount of current. And we're going to use just the, just the primary side because the fine wire that's wrapped around that primary side will give us a, a current lowering effect. It will give us resistance. It also has a second benefit because to start a fluorescent lamp, we need a high initial kick to start it. So what's going to happen is the, the power is going to come through the, the primary of a transformer. It's going to go into the fluorescent lamp. <coughs> It's going to come out of the fluorescent lamp, go into one end of one of the filaments on here. Now remember, in between, in, inside the base of this lamp, there's a starter bottle, right? Normally you would put your fluorescent starter, right? Normally this you'd have your little FS2 starter. 
and it would have the two pins on there. Normally you would connect these wires up to, you know, to those pins. But we're going to try and use the starter bottle that's in here without breaking the lamp. I could, I could break the lamp and get the starter out of here and do that, but I, this is just for fun. We'll see whether we can actually pull this off. Because I have no idea what's going to happen here, whether this is going to do anything or not. This might do absolutely nothing. But this is just kind of a fun little experiment. So, the current is going to go through the, tr the coil on the transformer. It's going to go into the filament, come out, go in through here. Now, the, this is going to be open circuit, right? Because there's nothing here. So, the current is going to end up being applied to one side of the starter bottle. The other ground side returns through the other filaments and through the starter. Now, what a starter bottle is, is basically, it's a switch. It's a neon lamp with a bimetallic strip in it. So maybe we'll cut this thing apart when I'm done to show you guys what's in it. But basically it's a little bottle like this and it's got two wires coming out of the bottom and one wire goes up just to a little electrode like that and the other wire comes up to a little spring. And that spring is made of what's called a bimetallic strip. What a bimetallic strip does is when it's heated it bends. It's like what's used in an old thermostat, the old mercury thermostats that would tilt back and forth. That, they were, that little spring that they were mounted on was a bimetallic strip. And basically what it is, is it's two different types of metal, such as copper and brass, or, or nickel and, and copper, or copper and steel, or two different types of metal that are bonded together, which have a different expansion coefficient when they're heated. So what happens is one of the metals heats and expands faster than the other, and as that happens, it pushes it over because the two of them are welded together. As one metal expands faster than the other, it causes it to bend. And that's exactly what happens inside a starter bottle, a starter switch. This is filled with neon or argon gas, depending on whether it's, if it's argon, it will go blue. So we'll cut this apart and see after I'm done here and see if it works this way. If it's neon, it will glow orange. But when that lights up, that will produce heat inside the starter, which will then heat up this strip and cause it to expand, and it'll make contact, which will now complete the circuit. So what we should see on this is we should see, if it's going to start, we should see the actual ends should glow in both of the tubes here. And then once that happens, the heat is removed, or the heat source is removed, because we're no longer ionizing the gas in the starter bottle, the bimetallic strip cools, it breaks the circuit. When that happens, and usually they'll do it two or three times, they'll blink a few times before they kick, this will continue. This little switch will sit there and go back and forth between conducting and non-conducting, and it will do that until we can ionize the gas in the tube. Once the ga gas in the tube ionizes, the tube is gonna drop to a low impedance and our, our circuit path is gonna be complete. It's gonna be through our our coil, which is our, which is going to be our ballast. A, a preheat ballast is nothing more than that, right? It's just the primary of a iron core transformer. It's no, there's no secondary. So our current path will then be up through the ballast, through the lamp, through the gas in the lamp, and then back to our neutral. Interesting. Let's see if this works. So I'm just going to dig up an old, regular, non-switching transformer. And uh, we'll just hook this up with some jumpers and uh, see if we get light. Have you ever seen an old cord like that? It actually has a green separate ground wire in the middle. I haven't. Anyway, what I've done is I've just taken my black and my white wires. <clears throat> We're going to hook one right to one prong on the transformer. Another black wire we're going to connect to that side. And the white wire we're going to connect down to one end of the other side of the tube. Then we're going to connect, we'll connect a couple of red wires here just to really confuse people. This is for our starter. So I'll just use two red jumpers and connect the other side of the tube to the two leads here. This wire is nothing. This is the DC side that's coming out of that adapter, which is not going to be going anywhere. So we're going to just throw that out of the way. Okay, so now you can see how it's connected. Our AC power coming in is going to go, one side's going to go to into the transformer, into the primary. It's going to come out from the primary going into one end of the tube. 
the other end of the tube is going to go back to neutral. The other side of the filaments on the tube is going to go into this one and if everything works as it's supposed to, this lamp should blink and start. If I can get power to this thing. Now, do we have power? Let's see whether we have power here first of all. <clears throat> I might not be getting enough current through this transformer. So here's our black side and our white side. And we have 100 volts. So probably not enough to ionize the gas in here. So let's go to a little bit bigger transformer. One that doesn't have quite as much drop. I so happen to have a little larger one here that we can use as a primary. This one. We'll just swap that one out for this one. It may not work trying to go through the two sets of series resistor, the two sets of series um, filaments either, right? That may be the factor that's preventing this from working. But here's my other one now in place of this one. We'll see whether this little bit larger transformer with a little bit bigger primary would give us a little more voltage across here to start this thing up. Oh, it's trying. We might get we might get something. Naturally, if I put these together like this, we'll see if I can start it manually. So we got a bit of a glow there. So I may have to go to an even bigger transformer because this one's not passing quite enough current but you can see we're getting some we're getting some glowage here but we're not getting enough so a slightly larger transformer is in order let's give this next one a try so we'll reconnect because I want it the, the, the whole goal is will it, will it light going through this my guess is it, it should it should ah ha, ha, we have light that's all it took a little bit bigger transformer a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger primary winding is all it took, and it lit. So this course is doing absolutely nothing now. All we were doing from this was we were just borrowing the starter that is inside here. And as you can see, well, it started up pretty quick. You'll see the ends glow here momentarily. When I plug it in, that's it. And it worked. Pretty simple experiment. And all I've got is this is just a, a regular, you know, transformer. If I disconnect my lead here, of course, it's going to go out. Now, what is happening here is the primary core, or the primary winding in here, is just acting like a big choke coil. What happens is when the switch closes here, it heats the filaments up in the end of the lamp. It also builds up a magnetic field in the primary of the transformer and then when the switch opens that magnetic field collapses and it gives you a kick and that's why all preheat start fluorescents use a an inductive type ballast they don't just use a resistor in 240 volt countries they don't need to use an inductive uh, starter or inductive transformer or inductive coil they have enough potential at 240 volts to ionize the gas so in a lot of the old preheat fixtures in 240 volt countries it was basically just a wire wound resistor uh, in series with the lamp and then a starter on the other side because the voltage was high enough but in 120 volt countries you definitely needed that kick to light the lamp because uh, you need a, just a little higher voltage than what's coming out of the plug at 120 volts Anyway, um, that is uh, that is that. Now I understand you can probably I probably could get this thing to fire up going through my um, my resistor, my bulb, you know my uh, my 50 or 60 watt light bulb uh, would probably limit the current enough that the lamp would run and without burning out without having to use. I may not have to even use a transformer at that point if I can get enough of a kick to make it start. So experiment number two. We're going to remove the transformer completely and we're going to connect the AC 120 volts directly across the lamp. 
Now what I'm going to do here is I've got my, my resistor lamp, which is sitting up here, my light bulb. I've got my power cord plugged into my resistor socket. So basically all the current is going to go through this light bulb and down through the cord into the fluorescent lamp. Now, I don't know whether this is going to start or not. In theory, if I can get enough heat in the lamp, it may ignite. It should. Even though I'm not using an inductive kick, it may not have enough to to uh, get the starter lamp to go, but we'll plug it in and see. So nothing's happening there, but if I do this manually, if I touch the red wires together and complete the circuit, I may be able to get this lamp, if I do it right, to fire. Aha! Did it! Now the lamp is running, and as you can see, the excess current is going through that light bulb. That's the only thing that's preventing this thing from blowing the circuit, is that light bulb. The lamp is going into full conduction, the remainder of the current is getting dumped in that 100 watt bulb. If I unscrew the 100 watt bulb, the light will go out and it won't start again. It won't start unless I touch the wires, create a bit of a spark there. That's enough to kick the lamp and get it going. Cool, huh? Now we're going to remove the, the plastic here from this starter bottle by cutting it. That just shows how sharp these snips are that I can just cut through that end of that plastic just like that. So you can see what's in the end in case nobody's ever bothered to open one of these up before and see exactly what's in there. It's just a little starter bottle which I should be able to cut out and we'll see whether we can actually make the lamp start by getting the other filaments that are in series here out of series. See whether I can make this lamp start going through my resistive load like the 240 lamps do. Okay, here's the starter down here. I should be able to just cut these wires that are going up to the lamp and the whole thing should just pop right out. There's one wire there. The other wire there. Okay, so here's what's inside the base. It's nothing more than a little starter lamp. If I connect the starter lamp up here, Will it start when I plug this into 120 volts going through my 100 watt light bulb as a resistive load? Will this lamp start now? Yes, it will. As the starter glowed blue, we know it's filled with argon gas. There you go. So this is kind of a waste of power though because I'm dumping a lot of current through that light bulb, but um, that's all you need to really to start up a fluorescent bulb is a like a 60 or 100 watt light, but even probably a 40 watt light would work too. I'm just using a 100 watt light here. But uh, just a light bulb in series with your fluorescent tube and a starter will make a 15 watt fluorescent light light. Or you can use a, a wall wart and that will make it light too. So if I take that those wires again and I go back through my wall wart, one to there, one to there, and then the other side of the wall wart, back to the lamp. I'm still going through my 100 watt bulb, but it will still light. But now you see the majority of the current is being dumped in the wall wart because if we look at the brightness of the series lamp, it is now very dim. But uh, the series lamp, of course, at this point is not needed because all the current is being dumped in the old wall ward here. Anyway, that's uh, my little experiment for for this video, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you again real soon.